Hi everyone, I'm Catherine. If you don't know me, I'm a master's student from the United States, currently studying in Nanjing, China. And lately, a lot of people have been asking me how I learned Mandarin and why I learned Mandarin. So today, I'm at Nanjing's beautiful Xianlin Lake, and I'm going to do a video specifically about my Mandarin learning journey. And I hope it is helpful to any of those of you who are out there learning Mandarin or any other language. So let's get started. If you haven't seen any videos of me speaking Chinese before, I'll put some up on the side here and you can check them out. So before I tell you guys how I learned though, I think I should give you like a little bit of backstory as to why I learned Chinese. It was actually something that happened quite randomly, to be honest. I was just looking for a challenge in my life. I really wanted to learn another language, but didn't know which one to pick. And right at that time, this was March of 2015, so six years ago, Right at that time, I joined an undergraduate research position. So I joined a lab group on my university campus. And that lab group happened to be run by a Chinese advisor. And all of the students in his lab were Chinese. So at the time, I was actually kind of confused about that. I thought, does this guy not want American students? Why is everybody Chinese? But I joined anyway. And the first day when I walked in the door, it was a Chinese-speaking work environment. They were all speaking in Chinese about their lab work, about their experiments, and I was like, whoa, this is cool. I want in on this. That's all it took. I decided I'm gonna self-teach Mandarin because I wanna be able to talk about my experiments with these other Chinese students. So that very day, I went home and I started self-teaching in Mandarin. A lot of people tend to ask me questions about taking classes, like how many years of classes does it take to get to HSK, whatever. I really can't answer that because I was at a technology university. I went to Virginia Tech and our school isn't really known for liberal arts, especially for foreign languages. There wasn't a whole lot available for learning Chinese. So I never took a class at any point. I would teach myself Chinese things and then I would go into the lab and talk to everyone, just kind of bounce all these words and phrases off of them. And that's how I learned. About two and a half years later, that's when I took the HSK and I passed HSK 6. And then I started my master's program at Nanjing University the fall of 2018. All my classes are in Chinese. My lab work is done in Chinese. My entire program is in Chinese. As I mentioned earlier, I never took any classes, but I can give you guys some tips about self-teaching or about some supplementary things that you can do outside of your class to improve even further. One thing, and if you're taking classes, you may not be able to take this piece of advice, but my personal advice is don't learn how to write by hand because it will take up a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of energy, but there's very little return from it. In real life, in my everyday life in China, I never use the skill of handwriting. It's an art, it's a beautiful thing, but it's so much effort and energy for a relatively little output. If you come to China, it's really not that relevant to be completely honest. I don't know, maybe people will be hating in the comments that if you learn a language, you should learn every aspect of it. But my personal experience is that in all the time I've spent in China, many summer and winter internships, being a student here, dating guys here, doing all kinds of things, it has virtually never been relevant. If it is, I just take out my phone and type something and then copy the characters by hand. I've had to do that a couple of times. But I, I would recommend if you're self-teaching, do not learn how to write. My second piece of advice for everyone is listen. Listening comprehension is so important. And I actually learned a different language before Chinese. I learned Hindi first. That's a whole nother story for another day. But I learned Hindi first. And a big mistake that I made with Hindi was that I never practiced my listening because I couldn't understand anything and I would get frustrated. So I would just keep on ignoring that aspect of it. So I was always focusing on reading and speaking, but I didn't understand what anyone was saying so nobody wanted to talk to me because I would just be staring at them with a blank expression. I already made that mistake with Hindi. So as soon as I started with Chinese, I was constantly exposing myself to listening materials like children's shows or radio shows or just anything I could get my hands on. I was constantly listening. I had headphones on, I'd be cooking, I'd be on the bus, and I'd be listening to kids' shows in Chinese all the time. At the very beginning, I could barely understand anything. My goal was if I can recognize a few words, that's an accomplishment. I don't have to understand every word. Just get a few words out of what they're saying and that's good enough. So one show that I relied on very heavily and I highly recommend, even though it's very annoying, is Peppa Pig, the Chinese version of Peppa Pig because it's super simple. It's all over YouTube. You can find it very easily. And it's just like, you just need the bare minimum of vocabulary and grammar knowledge 
who be able to understand Peppa Pig, but it is a very annoying show because they constantly oink. Like they oink every, <laughs> every few seconds on that show. But I listen to every episode of Peppa Pig. And after Peppa Pig, I listen to some other cartoons. I'll recommend them for you guys. I can put some links below. But I was just constantly listening to things all the time. So it made sure that my mind was already adjusting to the way that Mandarin is spoken, the way it sounds. From the very, very beginning, I didn't really have a chance to kind of mess up the pronunciations in my head because I was hearing them the way a native speaker would say them. It was in my head all the time. When I was talking to people in my lab group, for example, even though my vocabulary was still a little bit limited, I couldn't speak quite so well, they knew that I understood what they said. So they would keep talking to me anyway. And I think that's a lot better than if you've memorized a lot of phrases and you can say a lot of stuff, but you can't comprehend. Now I'll give you guys another piece of advice, which is to look at example sentences a lot. And for Chinese, there's a few great resources for that. I'll put the links below and you guys can check them out yourselves. These are really great resources because one problem that I've seen with people learning foreign languages is everybody loves to memorize vocabulary words. Everybody likes to know a lot of words, but they don't necessarily know how to use those words. So if you've memorized all of these fancy words, but you can't use them, what's the point? Any new word I learned, I would be reading at least 20, 30, 40, 50 example sentences to make sure I know how to use this word. I've been exposed to this word in so many different contexts that I am now comfortable using it. It's not just some thing I memorized and put in the archive and never touch it again. And one last piece of advice, probably the most obvious out of everything, is just make sure to talk to lots of people. So if you're in a university setting, see if maybe there's a Chinese Students Association or if there's some kind of Chinese learning club or just any opportunity that you have to communicate with more people, talk to more people. And if you really don't have anyone around you, at worst, just talk to yourself. I did that all the time. Just talk to yourself or think to yourself, try and think in the language you're learning. Like, just make sure you use it on a regular basis. Because for example, if you're going to class twice a week and that's the only exposure you're getting, you're not pushing yourself on a regular basis, it will be very hard for you to make a lot of progress. So that's why I made so much progress in such a short time, is because for me, Chinese was not just something I do on the side, it like became a part of my life, you know, like every day I was learning Chinese. And even now, the learning journey literally never ends. Don't think it stops, it never stops. I'm still learning Chinese. But especially back then, because I was living in the United States, every single day, from morning to night, I would take any and every opportunity I could to put Chinese into my life, whether sending some text to a friend, watching a Chinese TV show during lunch, or as I mentioned earlier, like while I'm cooking, while I'm on the bus, while I'm walking to class, I'm listening to something or like I'm reading something. I just made it a part of my life because for me, I was very internally motivated. I found it a lot of fun and a very enjoyable process to learn Mandarin. So I guess that's the ultimate tip I can give you guys, if, it's, if you can call it a tip at all, if you can find an internal motivator. For a lot of people, it's very external. Like a lot of the reason why you're learning is because you want to get something out of this language. Like, oh, it will make me look you know, really smart if I have Mandarin on my resume. Or I want to go travel in China, so I think it would be useful to speak Mandarin. I mean, not to say that they're not important, but if you don't have that internal motivation, like, I love doing this, this is fun, this is enjoyable, then it is just gonna be a struggle for you. And that's why I learned French for four years and could barely make a sentence because I didn't like French. I just didn't like it. If you don't like something, your mind will make it a struggle for you. If you love something, you will learn it quite easily. Like, I never found Mandarin to be super difficult, and I'm not saying that I'm some kind of genius because I'm not, okay? I'm terrible at math and terrible at French and terrible at a hundred things, but I just happen to really love learning Mandarin. I was always very passionate about it. I find it to be so much fun, so enjoyable. It's like a jigsaw puzzle that I'm constantly putting together and figuring it out. It's so much fun for me. So if you can find that joy in learning a language, it will make it a hundred times easier for you. That's all I wanted to say for today. I hope this was useful for you. Remember to check out the video description. I'll include some useful links in there. And I would love to hear in the comment section about any question you guys have or how you guys are doing on your language learning journey. So that's all for today. Goodbye.